Hello boys and girls. Today we're going to be making some colorful little birds. So watch along for the steps and I hope you enjoy this lesson. So our first step is to either draw circles freehand like this. We'll make about four of them. We're going to be making a picture of some little birds We're using circles. We'll add some little triangle noses to them, a little three-part wing, and some little legs. And you can put them in a setting. If you can't draw, too well freehand, you can take something like a cup or a lid, a jar, and you could actually trace them around. So make sure when you're tracing that you bump your crayon up along the edge. You're not tracing where you're going around big like this. So you're, you're actually bumping the edge of what you trace. So give yourself a couple birds. Let's everybody make four little birds. Some can be on the ground like these ones, these two are on the ground, these ones are in the sky. Some could be, they could all be in the sky. It's up to you, they could all be on the ground. So I've made my four little birds. Now I'm going to put some little beaks on them. So depending on which way I want them to look, I want this one looking up at this bird. So I'm gonna put his beak here and his eyes just a little circle. The way I'm gonna start, kind of like the way I would make the letter U, and I'm gonna make three U's together. And then I'm gonna give them some legs, straight line down, straight line down. And then I'm gonna put an upside down V on top of that so that it meets in the middle. That's how I make the leg. The close up of the leg is, and then upside down V stop here and come back down again. So there's that little bird. This little bird is going to be flying. So I'm gonna give him his eyes here. He just learned to get off the ground. I'm going to give him his one, two, three on his wings. One, two, three. I'm going to give him his little triangle mouth and then feet coming down. And that little upside down V over the feet. And this one, he's coming in for a landing. So I'm going to put his beak here. He's flying back home. Maybe it's mother bird and these are her little baby birds playing around. And I'm going to do the wings. One, two, three. One, two, three. And since he's flying totally in the air, I'm gonna see a little bit of his tail feathers. So I'm gonna make an upside down U. One, two, three, four. We'll put one over here five times, about like that. Now this little bird, I'm gonna have him, hmm, I'm gonna have him kind of looking over at this little guy. I'm not looking at the ground. Here's his little eye, here's his wing. And then I'm gonna give him his little feet here and here. So there's my four little birds, and next we're going to color them. If you want to make sky and ground, you can add a line in from where the grass would be, or the dirt, whatever you want. So there's the picture, and now I'm gonna start coloring it. I'm gonna color the birds first. So you may color your birds any colors you want. You might think of birds outside as you're doing it, I'm going to make this one a little red bird. I could make them two colors and make them a robin, but I've got a cheeky little cardinal outside always on my bird feeder, so I'm thinking of him. The beaks on birds are usually yellow or orange, so you can come and paint them now or you can paint them at the end. I'm going to leave mine all to the end, that way I can use the same color and over again. And another bird, he was new to my feet this year. I saw an indigo bird, and indigo is kind of a bluey purple color. So I'm gonna paint this one bluey purple. There. And you'll notice that I'm holding my brush the right way, the way we talked about, which is with your pinchers down by the metal ferrule. Holding it from the end doesn't give you very much control. So I encourage you to hold your brush correctly. And then I'm outlining, I'm using just the tips of the brush. I'm not painting by pushing, I'm painting by pulling towards my stomach or my body. And use the tips of the brush to just outline right around the edge. Then you can be a little more free with the interior part. And since we used a black crayon, it will resist water. You can paint right over it and it's not gonna run or anything. I'm gonna rinse my brush. Oh, I think I'm gonna go for a yellow bird because I saw a beautiful yellow, yellow finch on my uh, 
cone flowers this summer. So he's going to be a cheerful little bird up in the sky. On this one, I have to paint around his little beak, which I'll make orange so it has some contrast. And again, I'm going to outline that shape. And color his wings in. Now, if you want, you could include the same color for you know, two of one bird. So right now, I painted what we call our primary colors. Blue, yellow, and red are primaries. And primary colors can't be mixed. So I could mix blue and yellow together to get green, or I can mix yellow and red to get orange. But these three colors can't be mixed. So we call those our primaries. Some other colors like purple are a secondary color, which we make by mixing blue and red. So I'm, I'm including my primary colors in here. And I'm going to make this a purple bird. It's your artwork. You can make any colors. We'll learn more about our primary and secondary colors as the year goes on. Right now we're concentrating on our drawing skills and our following step-by-step -step instructions. If you want to make your bird have a different color of wings or tail feathers, you may. Some birds are one color on top and then their underside's a little lighter. I'm going to give him a little bit darker tail feathers here. So I used a light purple I had and a dark purple. Once I finish with that, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to get some of my orange paint. And using my small brush, I'm going to just Bit. Now, the reason why I stopped that one is because I have a little too much paint on my brush and I wanted to come over here and put some so it didn't make a puddle. Sometimes if you get too much paint, you can steal a little from the other one. So just be careful not to put too much water on your brush. So there's my little birds. And now we're going to work on painting the background. So down here, I'm going to make it a grass color. I could make it mud. If you want to add some other things like a sun or a cloud or a worm in your picture. This one, I have the little bird eating a little worm there. So I'm going to take my green and I'm going to come start right and go around the bird. Again, you can go right across those feet. It's not going to run. It's a black crayon we used and outline. And to make it easier for myself, I'm going to turn my paper sideways and I'm going to paint all the way across it. Nice long stroke. Start at the top and pull it all the way down. Start up here, come all the way, get rid of my little white spots I see. And blend it out. Make sure I rinse my brush again. I'm going to work upside down now do the sky. Um, so I have this color of blue I already used, so if I make my sky the same blue, it's not going to show up real well. So I do have a lighter blue in my watercolor paints, or you could put more water in it so that it would come out a lighter blue. So when you put more water, it comes out a lighter blue. And the sky is kind of a nice fluffy area, so don't be afraid to, whoop, don't be afraid to, uh, Add a little more water when you're doing the sky because you've got a big area. I will say you have to work a little quickly when you're doing the sky so that things don't dry and leave puddle marks. So I'm just kind of moving that watery pigment around on my paper. I'm slowing down when I get to the bird. So I'm using the tip of the brush to go around and filling it in. Come over here. I'm going to put some water down first. I'm going to brush with some blue, and then I'm going to add my color so I can. Kind of swirl it around quickly. 
here, get that little dot. If you don't move quickly, you get edges like this one here. So you can always come back in and put a little more color on top of there if you need to cover up like where two parts joined together. If too much, you can borrow some of the color, like I said, and move it to another part of your artwork. Have this little spot here. And a lot of times the sky is lighter toward you, the ground than it is up at the top of the sky. So if you want to make it a sunset, you could paint it um, different colors. You could paint it like blue into purple and to red and orange into yellow for a sunset. You don't have to have your birds. You can have your birds all in the sky and not do a grass. It's your artwork. Do it however you like. And there's your finished picture. When you get done, do the seesaw activity where you upload a picture of your artwork to seesaw so I can see your beautiful artwork. It's been great making art with you.